When a certain demographic can't understand something, the conclusions they reach are off the chart. Welcome to World of Batshit. The Earth, our home. A superstition-driven stagnation gave way to progress via reason. Thinking folk have, in recent centuries, figured out much about the Earth, how it works, and its place in the universe. Despite the sum of human knowledge being available to everybody, essentially for free, there is a collection of primitives who walk among us using our resources and technologies whose minds are so parochial and small that they think that there is no universe because space supposedly doesn't exist. Even though increasingly accurate measurements made over the last four centuries quite clearly show that it does. <sighs> surprise, surprise, they think they've uncovered yet another global conspiracy using the kind of reasoning that even Ralph Wiggum would have the mental acuity to be embarrassed with. Here's one. He has a channel by the name of Insanity is Sanity, which is a false statement in its own right. He believes that Earth is flat with a dome that vaccines kill people, even though mine and yours didn't, that anyone with cancer is being murdered, that cannabis cures cancer, presumably all kinds, by magic, and that dinosaurs never existed. Hmm. He has recently concluded that God exists because he saw a double rainbow after thinking about rainbows, whilst wondering whether there is a dome over Earth, and thinks that seeing said rainbow couldn't have been a coincidence brought about by living in a country where showery weather is a regular occurrence. We'll be needing some contraction of his channel name for narration purposes though. Well, he's got a beard, holds primitive beliefs, rejects Western education, hypocritically uses modern technology to spread his backward nonsense, and thinks that throwing his toys out of the pram is a viable method of addressing criticism. He seems then to have a few things in common with religious lunatics like Islamic State. However, let's stick with Cletus. He also thinks the moon doesn't reflect sunlight, so what could possibly go right when he found this picture, taken by the epic camera aboard the Discover satellite, and decided to analyse it for himself? It's a nice picture, but it just... It just doesn't seem, it doesn't look right. It does. So we're already off to a cracking start with that stalwart of conspiratard thinking, looking at pictures on the internet and declaring that there seems to be something wrong with them because they don't meet whatever arbitrary expectations the viewer happens to have at the time. In Cletus' case, his consequent suspicions lead him to conclude that something is going on, and naturally only a global conspiracy of epic proportions could be responsible. Before we go on to what will undoubtedly be an amusing attempt to stick it to the man, we're already in for a diversion. Japan's new satellite captures an image of the Earth every 10 minutes. Look how incredible this looks. Yes, this is the new Himawari 8 satellite, launched by Japan, which became operational on 7th of July 2015. It captures 144 images of Earth every day, one every 10 minutes. This is three times more frequent than its predecessor, MTSAT-2, which was launched in February 2006. Being managed by the Japan Meteorological Agency, Japan is obviously of major interest to them, and so they also get an image of Japan every two and a half minutes. Cletus doesn't explain why he thinks nine years of technological progress since MTSAT-2 should act as a barrier to taking photographs more regularly than the previous generation of satellite. But are you buying this, that there's a satellite in space, God knows how far away? I'm willing to bet that had he read any of the articles about this satellite, or dug a little deeper than just looking at the pictures and crying foul, he would have found out that this satellite is in a geostationary orbit. This should be apparent just by looking at the imagery to anyone who attended school. It seems then that not only does he have no idea how high that is, but that he simply couldn't be bothered to find out before declaring such a feat to be impossible. Naturally, these lead towards another non sequitur conclusion, that the imagery isn't real and is computer generated. It's another conspiratard stalwart. Cletus doesn't get around to explaining why these allegedly computer-generated images of Earth are actually useful for weather forecasting and typhoon monitoring in the Pacific. 
or why other geostationary weather satellites have been doing a bang-up job of supplying the data needed for accurate weather monitoring for decades. It's as if he thinks that these images serve no purpose other than to pad out news articles as part of the conspiracy du jour against him and his kind. Look at this. I, I don't buy this. This is computer generated. This is not real. I, I don't think the technology, no way, they, they, they can't do this. Sadly, he also doesn't get around to explaining what technical barriers prevent the existence of satellites, or of capturing images in different wavelengths on a regular basis, or of transmitting those images back to Earth. If he has satellite television, presumably he thinks that's part of the conspiracy too. After all, if sending one picture every 10 minutes is impossible, transmitting hundreds of channels of advert-laden useless shite at 25 or 35 images per second with sound must also be impossible. <laughs> Let me show you one thing here. Like, first of all, we can't see any stars in the background, you know? How long are we going to have to keep explaining cameras to conspiracy nuts? One more time. When taking a photograph of a relatively bright subject, such that it is properly exposed, small, relatively dim objects are underexposed. If you want to see the stars in an image like this, you're going to have to take a longer exposure, and in doing so, overexpose the Earth, rendering your photo of it useless. It seems though that Cletus is, at least in his own limited way, aware of this. Having declared that there are no stars in the background, he goes on to say, now, if we turn up the exposure, we can we start to see stars in the background, okay? Oh, so there are stars in the background then. Only Carl Gallops is able to undermine his own claims more spectacularly than that. It does, however, get worse. Now, if we zoom in, you can see the same um, star that we had down there. There's one here. I found three over the earth um now there's a purple one here now these could be just anomalies in the picture it's just gonna be like missing pixels or whatever but it's it, i just find it strange that um there are stars in the background that look the same as the stars that are over the the pixels that are over the earth well which is more likely anomalies in the picture or a global conspiracy to hide the flat earth from the unwashed masses and a global conspiracy where the image fakers are so stupid they draw stars on the Earth. In conspiracy land, the first option just won't do. Like I said, this doesn't look real to me and there's some stuff, stuff wrong with this picture. But he's just shown that there's nothing wrong with the picture, offered sensible explanations for the things he thinks might be wrong, and then discarded them without giving any reason whatsoever. Luckily, his most compelling evidence yet of image fakery is about to be squeezed out. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, if you turn the image upside down, you can see... Well, let's let him explain. Can you guys see that? There we go. Can you see that? JFY. JFX. TFX. Is it a T? Can you see sex? on the basis that you have to turn the image upside down, fiddle with the contrast, squint, ignore the more recognisable letters J, F and Y, then, well, okay, maybe it says sex. Now, you, you could say that that's coincidence, but I don't think so. And that's why I wouldn't mind betting that Cletus' annual tinfoil budget is above the national average for a family of four. I don't see why they would put this here. Unless they're, you know, they know that this is going to come out and they... I don't, I don't know, it, just, it doesn't make sense, guys. I just, I'm really confused. Some might say that if your own explanations don't even make sense to you, that it could be a hint, some vague whiff of a clue, that they're baseless and have no grounding in reality. He goes on to show other examples where, if you colour in sections of patterns that otherwise don't stand out, you can write the word sex on just about anything. However, he doesn't quite see it that way. This is done on purpose, guys. This is all mind control. Sex. So, I've made my point. So when you look at this picture and you see sex written in the clouds... I don't know, tell me, tell me that's just random cloud formation. Yeah, right. Cletus' thesis on mind control by the ever-unidentified they 
is that they like writing the word sex all over the shop, presumably to give adults who like colouring things in something to do whilst entertaining their fascination with the word sex. It just sounds like the kind of thing that a shadowy global elite would do, doesn't it? Back to the clouds. And look at this one here. Look how long this straight line is. Okay, it's not quite straight, it bends it slightly here, but the, the, the point here is that in nature you don't get such large um, cloud formations like in a straight line. Someone had better tell Saturn that these nearly straight lines can't happen due to a hitherto unknown law of nature that some guy on the internet just plucked out of his bottom. I'm sure we'd all love to know where our professor of atmospheric dynamics learned this alleged rule of cloud formation. However, we shouldn't hold our breath because it's just another argument from ignorance being used to justify another argument from incredulity. I've never ever seen cloud formations like this. Like you could see you see them like on a small area. Like if you look up in the sky over your town, you you could get like like you do with the chemtrails, but over such long distances, mm mm. So, on the basis that it hasn't happened on the small patch of sky above him, apparently the behaviour of the rest of the world can be extrapolated, particularly over the southern Pacific. As this particular cloud formation looks to be several thousand kilometres long, I put it to you, dear viewer, that Cletus can't see that much sky from his house. Unless, of course, his house is the International Space Station, which it isn't, because only the really smart kids get to go into space. If they can take pictures like this from a million miles away, why don't we have any proper pictures of the moon, like the surface of the moon? Spacecraft like the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter have provided comprehensive surface maps with a resolution down to 100 meters per pixel, as well as the most accurate topographic map of the moon made to date. It has also returned spectacular images, such as this photo of the mountains in the center of the Tuco crater. And if that's too recent for you, the Galileo probe took this image of the moon on December 9, 1990, and even shows some of the far side of the moon. Or there's this mosaic of 18 images from 1992. Or there's this image taken by Gregory Rivera from 2010. These are just three of many, many images that have been taken of the moon from space and from Earth by professionals and amateurs alike. <laughs> In what sense don't we have any proper pictures of the moon? Since Cletus didn't think to regale us with his criteria for what constitutes a proper picture, we're going to have to conclude that he thinks that any photo taken from Earth magically doesn't count, and that any photo taken from space is automatically fake, because, you know, conspiracy. Oh, and because he thinks the moon emits light rather than reflects it. <laughs> Now why are they sending back such crappy pictures of other planets like Pluto and Mars, like all blurry and... What is this about? This latest objection to image quality adequately demonstrates that whatever people far more intelligent than them achieve, conspiracy nuts will never be happy. When the images aren't to their liking, they're blurry and crappy. When high resolution images are delivered, Joe Conspiritar doesn't like those either, and claims that such quality is impossible and must be fake. Indeed, Cletus appears to think that it is impossible to take clear photographs of Earth. Why is this so clear from 1, 000, 1 million miles away? And you've got to consider a lot of things, guys, like the, the fact that the Earth is spinning and moving, rotating around the sun, they say, and the satellite that took the picture would be travelling as well. Is he suggesting that an object rotating at 0 0.0007 revolutions per minute is spinning too fast to take a photograph of it? Is he suggesting that being one million miles away from something makes it impossible to photograph it? Sadly, we'll never know, because he doesn't justify his incredulity here either. So, let's watch Earth rotate in real time. Hmm. Hmm. Speedy, huh? Okay, so let's not wait any longer. It's going to take four minutes just to rotate one degree. It is entirely possible to take a photograph of something rotating at that rate, which is why attempts to do so have been and always will be successful. For instance, the EPIC camera aboard the Discover satellite has an exposure time of between 20 and 100 milliseconds. Earth's rotation rate at the equator is 465.1 meters per second, 
So with an exposure time of 100 milliseconds, motion blur at the equator would be equivalent to just 46.5 meters. The effective resolution of EPIC is 10 kilometers per pixel at its best. So the maximum extent of motion blur is just four thousandths of a pixel. Unsurprisingly, the resultant image is sharp and clear. Cletus seems to think that because the subject and the camera are moving, that this presents some kind of insurmountable problem. In a video on orbits, he concludes that the Moon has to speed up and slow down to keep up with Earth. He appears to think that the Moon has to chase Earth as it orbits the Sun, as if there were no force responsible for orbits. And that's just the tip of that particular shiteberg. Look at it. Looks like the whole East Coast and Florida are missing. Despite a global conspiracy to fake images of Earth, Cletus thinks that the alleged image fakers are so stupid that they forgot to draw the East Coast of America and Florida. Finding these allegedly missing parts of America is somewhat facilitated by a simple one-step process of actually looking for them. And when we do that, there they are. Yeah, so the more you look, the more anomalies you find. Like, it looks like there's water all above Oregon. Where's Washington, like, and Canada? Well, I can't even see Canada. There's Oregon, there's Washington, and there's Canada. Come on, it's not that hard. I think a lot of the stuff, uh, continents are under the clouds, but they still look quite strange. Uh, because you you can't see anything under the clouds like clouds tend to be like that being highly reflective rather than transparent that does happen yes like some of the continents i can't even see weird from this vantage point only the americas and easternmost tip of russia are visible the preferred explanation as to why the other continents aren't visible, at least for those of us who aren't certifiable loons, is that planets are spheroids, which leads inexorably to the conclusion that the side of the planet that you can't see is, well, on the other side of the fucking planet. Why is it even necessary to explain this? Like I said, some of the continents look like they're missing, some of them look flooded. Um, Maybe this is what's to come, like, maybe they're trying to teach us, uh, show us what's coming. Yes, Cletus has decided that the reason he can't see some continents isn't because they're on the other side of the world, or because he's holding the picture upside down and has irredeemably confused himself in the process, but that the missing continents are being shown submerged under the oceans to prepare the feckless masses for what is to come. You heard it here first, folks. The ever faceless and nameless they know of an impending global flood and only by failing basic geography and not understanding the third dimension can their cunning schemes be revealed. And guys, you gotta realize that NASA monitors all like internet chit chat. Like they know, obviously, of course they know. Of course! They know the flat earth is trending. They, they can see the evidence that people are putting out, the questions people are asking. And I think this picture was released to try and maybe, I don't know, to use as proof to shut people up. Of course! Um, so yeah, so we got sex raining over the east coast of North America and... No, it says JFX and that's the west coast. You're holding it upside down. What I think is that these paintings I think that they draw them like this one that says 2015 was probably drawn maybe some like 20 2007 and then this one was really maybe they released them on different dates I don't know because I was trying to th think like who would paint these like they have in-house artists but to me, it seems they're all painted by different people, so they must hire people to come and do these. Yes, for 40 years, NASA has been paying artists to paint Earth, even though there have been perfectly serviceable spacecraft above the planet on a regular basis throughout that time, with those newfangled cameras that can take pictures and all that fancy stuff. So, how do they make sure they don't talk? Oh, I know! I know! Me! Me! Um, they kill them as soon as they've finished painting and then make it look like a car crash. 
Or maybe, just maybe, there's no need to hire people to paint the earth. Because photography has advanced since its invention in the 19th century, spacecraft have been orbiting Earth since 1957, and because it's possible to put cameras on spacecraft and transmit the images back. I don't know, it's a, it's a radical idea, I know. I'm just throwing it out there on the basis of nearly 60 years of solid evidence. But solid evidence has never been known to sway a conspiracy nut. Maybe they pay them a lot, obviously. They, they're getting billions of dollars, aren't they? They're getting billions of dollars to give, give us fake pictures. Presumably the guy that does the paintings every 10 minutes for the Japan Meteorological Agency, and who also manages to paint an image of the weather around Japan every two and a half minutes, must be the richest man in the world. Not to mention supernaturally gifted in discerning the weather of the entire Asia-Pacific region. He goes on to conclude that because he uses the clone stamp in Photoshop, whichever recent billionaire conspirator painted this picture of Earth must have done so too, because, you know, he can spot these things. After randomly speculating and bollocksing on for 13 minutes, Cletus finally gets to his conclusion. I, um, I have a feeling that something strange is going on, guys. Something very strange is happening. I don't know what it is, but something is going on. Yes, and what more proof of a global conspiracy and a fake space program that has launched hundreds of fake satellites could anyone possibly need than someone's feelings based on the same old nonsense of conspiratards the world over? Arguments from their own ignorance, and arguments from incredulity. If you thought the bottom of the barrel of human stupidity had any part left unscraped, check out the people who think space itself is part of the conspiracy. It's a world of batshit. This is what they do. They put these subliminal messages in everything, in all the Disney cartoons, adverts, I did the calculations that the, the satellite is traveling at about 277 miles an hour for it to get where it is now. They've even put like chemtrails. <laughs> Not as many as ex that, that really exist, but um, uh, there's a couple, like there's some here. Like I said, some of the continents look like they're missing. 